Acts 15, part 204, continuing with the video series. Who are the prophets talking about? After this, I will return and I will rebuild the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down. I will rebuild its ruins and I will set it up so that the rest of mankind may seek the Lord, even all the Gentiles who are called by my name, says the Lord who does these things. Who, who is this talking about? The prophets are talking about the restoration of the house of Israel and the reunification of all 12 tribes of Israel by the restoration of the tabernacle of David. It's about Israel. David was king over Israel, not the king of the Gentiles. That's what the rebuilding of the tabernacle of David is all about. So, how do the Gentiles fit in? Well, Acts 15 is actually quoting Amos 9.11. But if you go back just a couple verses, you're going to see that Amos 9 verse 9 will shed some light on the subject. Amos 9 verse 9 says, For surely I will command and I will sift the house of Israel among all the nations. As a grain is sifted in the sieve, yet not the smallest grain shall fall to the ground. And on that day, verse 11, I will raise up the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down and repair its damages. I will raise it up, its ruins, and rebuild it as in the days of old, that they may possess the remnant of Edom and all the Gentiles who are called by my name, says the Lord, who does this thing, will bring back the captives of my people, Israel. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. And I really should go into Hosea 1 because this will really cover a lot of that. Hosea is commanded by God to marry a prostitute named Gomer, and they have three kids. The first kid is named Jezreel, which means to scatter. The second kid is named Lo Ru'amah, which means no mercy. And the third child is named Lo Ami, which means not my people. So the prophecy is because of this prostitution and because of unfaithfulness, God's going to scatter the house of Israel. They're going to have no mercy and they are no longer going to be called God's people. So this is the question. Did the house of Israel lose their identity? Is it possible that God's chosen people from the northern kingdom of the house of Israel eventually became so absorbed into the nations through intermarriage that they were taken captive by that over time their offspring and their offspring and their offspring's offspring's offspring had no clue who they were descended from? Is it possible to lose your identity? Is it possible to not know who you are? To not know your ancestry? There's a whole business called Ancestry.com dedicated to this very subject, right? There was a German gentleman who found out that he was actually Scottish. So yes, it is possible to lose your identity. Now, it's often taught that the church has replaced Israel or right now is in a parenthetical, that means in parentheses, uh, right? That the church is, for now, uh, the focus of God's ministry and Israel's kind of set to the side. But there's nothing further from the truth than that. That is not true. In fact, that violates scripture. In Jeremiah 31 verse 37, it says, Thus says the Lord, If heaven above can be measured and the foundations of the earth can be searched out beneath, I will also cast off all the seed of Israel for all that they have done, says the Lord. Are the heavens measured? No. Is the foundations of the earth been searched out? No. I mean, we have submarines that haven't even been to the bottom of the ocean. So Israel is not cast off. 
Gentiles here in Acts 15 are actually linked to Israel. So in other words, these Follow Gentiles come to faith are actually the reason and part of the plan of God to restore Israel. Not create a separate, different church or denomination, but to unify and regather the whole house of Israel. He's using the prophecy of Amos 9 that teaches us about this um, reunification and regathering of the whole house of Israel. But I'm going to tell you something. We allow scripture to define scripture, right? So we're taking it back to what the scripture says. If it violates scripture in my book, the way I study, it's out. If it violates any part of the scripture, it's out. Scripture cannot be broken. You can't use one scripture to violate another. This is exactly what Jesus was saying in Mark 7, verse 9, when he said, All too well you reject the commandment of God that you may keep your tradition. They were trying to use scripture to violate scripture, and you can't do that. Right? By linking Amos 9 to the Gentile believers coming to faith, James is equating that the Gentiles are part of the house of Israel that has been scattered and taken captive and now is in the process of being restored. But I know what you're thinking. Well, wait, what if I have absolutely no bloodline to the house of Israel, the house of Judah, or any of that? That's fine. You still get grafted in as a believer. Oh, I know it's going to be sinking in for some of you. And that's why he's given these Gentiles these four commandments. Because in order to have fellowship, in order, in order to have restoration, in order for this regathering to happen, you have to have some boundaries. You have to have fellowship. And fellowship, there has to be some basic ground rules. Right? And we're going to get into that right now. James gives these Gentiles four basic ground rules to follow, right? And what are they? Look. Acts 15 verse 20 says, But that we write to them to abstain from things polluted by idols, from sexual immorality, from things strangled, and from blood, right? Things polluted by idols, sexual immorality, things strangled, and blood, all are found in Leviticus 17. Right in the heart of Leviticus, verse 17, or chapter 17, all four of these things are found. A says, they shall no longer sacrifice their sacrifices to the goat demons. That's what it says. That they're not going to sacrifice their sacrifices to the goat demons. Well, when you sacrifice to a goat demon, you are sacrificing to an idol. Okay, that's idol worship, right? And verse B, it says why? With which they played the harlot. Hmm. They played the harlot? What's a harlot? Oh, it is somebody who's sexually immoral, right? So there you've got things polluted by idols and sexual immorality. Now let's go to things strangled in blood. We're going to jump to 13. Verse 13 says, He shall pour out its blood and cover it with dust. Think about that. If you have to, if you have to kosher kill an animal and pour out its blood, that automatically means you are not strangling that animal. The blood's going on the ground and you have to cover the dirt if the blood is going on the ground, the blood is not in the body, right? It's not strangled, leaving the blood in the body. This is an idiomatic way of teaching you about things not being strangled. Now jump back to verse 10. And it says, And any man from the house of Israel, or from the aliens who sojourn among them, who eats any blood, I will set my face against that person who eats the blood, and I will cut him off from among his people. Being cut off from among your people, you cannot have fellowship with. 
These four things will cause you to be cut off from among your people, right? So they're given these four things. They're given the, uh, to stay away from uh, things sacrificed to idols, uh, from sexual immorality, from things strangled, and from blood. It tells you why, though. In verse, in the next verse, it says, For Moses had throughout many generations those who preach him in every city being read in the synagogues every Sabbath. All right, let's, let's break that down. Moses is, Moses is a Hebraic idiom for Torah. Moses is a Hebraic idiom for Torah. Torah, it says, Moses, is in every city. Where is it? In the synagogues. When do they read it? On the Sabbath. When is this? After the death, the burial, the resurrection of the Messiah. Right? After that, they're still honoring the Sabbath. After that, they're still reading the Torah. After that, they're still learning in every city on the Sabbath. And more importantly, they're given these four edicts to abstain from things polluted by idols, from sexual immorality, from things strangled, and from blood. For Moses had throughout many generations those who preach him in the cities in every synagogue on the Sabbath. In other words, give them these four things, and they will grow and learn and mature when they go to the Sabbath, when they go to the synagogue on the Sabbath and hear the Torah. Hello, somebody. Are you picking up what I'm putting down? <laughs> is this starting to sink in a little bit? I know it is. Praise the Lord. So in other words, they were expected to grow and mature in the word by going to the synagogue and listening to what Moses wrote, a.k.a. the Torah, on the Sabbath because in the synagogues they had a weekly Torah portion that was being read. Then they would naturally learn more about life as a believer and grow in their relationship with the Messiah and walk in the blessings of Yahweh through their obedience. So we have these basic instructions for not getting kicked out of fellowship, right? But you know, Leviticus 16 through 20 talk about all these things in even greater detail. And that's kind of interesting. I'm going to tell you why, right? But you have to understand that improper worship and sexual immorality are grounds for expulsion based on Torah, right? And that man shall be cut off from his people, and they shall no more offer sacrifice to demons after whom they played the harlot. And chapter 18 goes into more details. Things strangled are grounds for expulsion based in Torah, right? It says, um, the bird that may be eaten shall pour out its blood and cover it with dust, a.k.a. not strangled. For the life of all flesh is in the blood. Whoever eats of it shall be cut off. Now, I want to show you something pretty interesting here. We're going to kind of journey into some parallels of this very thing that the four edicts also are happening in Egypt. Israel was saved by faith, by applying the blood on the doorpost that Yahweh was going to deliver them by grace. They applied the blood. Then they were given some basic instructions before leaving Egypt, right? They were given a Bible, B-I-B-L-E, basic instructions before leaving Egypt. Now, the thing is, you won't find all these basic instructions in the Exodus story about them leaving Egypt. No. But you will find more in other parts of the Bible, such as Ezekiel. Ezekiel is going to recount the story of the Exodus journey, and he's going to give more information that's not in Exodus. And it's not in Leviticus or Deuteronomy or any of the Torah. But it is in Ezekiel. So let's look at it. Ezekiel 20, verse 5. On the day when I chose Israel and raised my hand in the north to the descendants of the house of Jacob and made myself known to them in the land of Egypt, I raised my hand in the north to them, saying, I am the Lord your God. On that day I raised my hand in the north to them. It says raise his hand a lot. Don't 
Did it, doesn't it? Mm. On that day that I raised my hand in an oath to them to bring them out of the land of Egypt into the land that I had searched out for them, flowing with milk and honey, the glory of all the lands. Then I said to them, each of you throw away your abominations which are before your eyes and do not defy yourself with the idols of Egypt. I am the Lord your God, but they rebelled against me and would not obey me. They did not cast away the abominations were, which were set before their eyes, nor did they forsake the idols of Egypt. Then I said to them, Each of you throw away the abominations which are before your eyes, it says in Ezekiel 20, verse 7. They did not cast away the abominations which were before their eyes, Ezekiel 20, verse 8. Nor did they forsake the idols of Egypt, uh, Ezekiel 20, verse 8b. They did not do it. They ended up not throwing away the idols. They ended up committing sexual immorality. They ended up com committing fornication with the golden calf. Similarly, these New Testament believers, the Gentiles, are giving four basic instructions about putting away the idols and to cast away the things, are you hearing this, that are abominable, that cause you to be cut off, that cause you to stop having fellowship. Listen to this. The Israelites got saved. Then they were given some basic rules. Then they journeyed to Mount Sinai. Then they were given the Torah. Now watch this. The Gentiles get saved. Then they're given some basic rules. Then they journey to the synagogue. Hello. Then they're given the Torah. Come on, somebody. Are you catching this?